Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Woki and I'm not here with Zenrot, but this is a show in which me and Zenrot, usually it's Zenrot, today it's D Free. Say hello, D Free. What's up? Thanks for having me on. Yes, we plan to watch every single Shonen Jump thing uh, that was released in anime form, including live action, until both me and Zen perish from the mortal plane. And today, we're here to talk about One Piece Film Red. Now, unfortunately, uh, you know, everyone has a flaw in them, and Zen's flaw is that Zen. he can't. Yeah, Zen's flaw is that he can't get into One Piece. <laughs> He's yeah, tried yeah. so. I was just about to say it's been a while since I've heard anything about it, but I know that he didn't like it, then tried it. I think he even tried reading it, right? Yeah, he's he's uh, he's tried. He's a big reader. He loves reading it. I don't think he could. When the day comes when I finally convince Zen for us to start watching One Piece will be the day that Zen has given up, <laughs> and he knows that we're about to embark in a giant quest here. But yeah, he always tries to read the manga, and he has, like, specific, a lot of negative feelings towards One Piece. His favorite, He really did like the, the Chopper stuff, though, but that's because he loves Christmas. And uh, I honestly, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I also, I also honestly think he would really like the Brooke stuff because he's also a big fan of Halloween. But he has to actually get to Brooke, and he just can never get that far. But thankfully for everyone else, I absolutely love One Piece, and so we're gonna be able to talk about Film Red. And I brought in someone who also loves. Well, you're actually the reason I got into One Piece. Really? Yes, because you started playing Bounty Rush. Oh and I, wow, that's cool. Yeah, I would watch your Bounty Rush videos, and I'd be like, this game seems kind of cool. I'm going to check it out. I I, I tangentially know about One Piece, because if you play enough like Shonen Jump crossover stuff, like you know like Luffy, and you know yeah. some of the Straw Hats and stuff like that. But I didn't know a, a whole lot of them. You were talking about dudes like Katakuri, and I was like, I don't know who the fuck this guy is, but he seems really <laughs> annoying. <laughs> Speaking of which, he was uh, in the movie. I, I enjoyed seeing him for a second. Yeah, you enjoyed your brief cameo of uh, a curry in this one for literally a second. But that's cool, man. I'm 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 happy that you got into it and you enjoy it because uh, One Piece. I for the longest was like, eh, I don't really want to get into this. And one day I was just at home and I was still in school at this point. I'll I'll be it. I think it was like my senior year so it's i mean it's been like over it's been like over a decade i'm not like i'm not 30 yet but i'm approaching 30 mm. uh so it's been a while so anyways it was like my junior or senior year and i was at home and uh i i flipped on one episode then one episode turned to two then that turned to four or five and then i was just chilling and all of a sudden, I got caught up, man. And uh, for me, I have really been enjoying it ever since. It, but you know what it is, too, is that it's such a long-running series that you can say things like, I've been watching this or reading this for freaking 10 years. Mm -hmm. It's <laughs> true. it's still going. So. And yeah. I want to say one of the biggest selling points to this movie is Shanks is doing something. Yeah, which... that is not something that happens very often. No, we've talked about that. There's actually a video of us back when we were, did a Bounty Rush video together talking about like, oh, yeah, Shanks could be an anniversary. The problem is Shanks has never done anything. <laughs> yeah, he's he's always off on the side. And that's that's kind of the issue with this uh, series being such an expansive world with so many characters that I feel like if you're not the main cast, a lot of them don't get a lot of shine. How, however, mm -hmm. I will say during the arcs they're directly involved in, like uh, one of my favorite arcs. God damn it! What's it? What's it called? Oh, I forgot what that arc is called because it's if been a few can, years now. If you can tell me the start of it, I should be able to tell you. With uh, with Rebecca and uh. Oh, that's uh the Don Flamingo the. Yeah, yeah that one. Forget, but like, what's the freaking location oh, called? God damn it! Uh, <laughs> damn, now you've got me. <laughs> <laughs> but I just remember that uh, the Tantadas and all those characters had so much like you know development. Dress Rosa. And, like, there it is, Dressrosa. God dang it. Um, <laughs> but, like, anytime there's a new arc, though, they will flesh out these characters very, very well. But the problem is some of them, like like Shanks, are introduced so early into the story that every now and again they go back to them and give you more about them, but you don't see them enough as you would, as much as you would like. No. It's like the so. ultimate buildup of, I think, a lot of people who are currently in One Piece is that we understand that at some point he will do something 
and it will be awesome. It's just that you have to wait years to actually get it. And I think that's also what kind of puts people off of One Piece, if I'm being 100% real with you. Some people can't handle that yeah. level of dedication to it. It's really insane. When well, you-, you also look at, like, the sheer volume of yeah. of chapters that are in this and and thousand episodes like you look at the sheer freaking volume there are not many series like that what's that one detective one that's got like so De- many episodes detective conan yeah dude i i, I want to watch it but i'm just like god dang <laughs> yeah me too hey you want to start a side, side no. video project where we watch all of detective conan no 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 no, no. i can't commit to that <laughs> <laughs> you have actual children. You can't be like me and be like, hey, whatever. We'll <laughs> dedicate some of our lives to finishing Detective Conan. Yeah, just like, I can't. I can't. I cannot. But I would like to. But it's just like, yeah. you look at that number and it's like. It's too big. Yeah, it's it's too big. And, yeah. I, and I like how they do those little uh, One Piece does this and other series do as well. But they do those like OVAs that are. Uh, meant to recap an entire arc in like an hour hour and a half or whatever those Mm -hmm. though those in those though you will miss a ton of development and stuff Mm -hmm. but i do like if you wanted to just get into the series that they do those as a whole yeah so i was gonna say that might be where you just send zen if he wants to just get caught up (laughs) kind of quickly to watch those uh you know movies yeah, whatever. likely, but nah, I'm going to make him watch all the anime for it. When we get there, I swear, <laughs> eventually, we will get some One Piece and I'll make him watch through all of it. It'll be a hell of a trip. Oh uh, my but, for, God. but for now, we'll talk about One Piece film, Red. So this is usually the part where, because it is this is technically a new series we're talking about where I can explain about the series itself. But to be 100% real with you, if you don't know One Piece, you should know One Piece. One Piece is the biggest thing in Shonen Jump at the moment. A lot of people will say there's some other stuff, such as Jujutsu Kaisen, and the only reason they say that is because they are (laughs) English-speaking. But on the Japanese side, it's pretty clearly One Piece is, for all intents and purposes, what we in America view Dragon Ball as. It's the big... It's the big... It's the big enchilado. This is... They they made, for us, bringing it over here, they gave us Carl's Jr. Cups. (laughs) We didn't get that for Dragon Ball. (laughs) Yeah, dude, this movie, watching this movie, seeing everything about this movie and the the way that they treated this movie and and the promotion, even though the promotion isn't great for either movie, really, they both could have used a lot, but it just seemed like they cared more about this movie than they did Dragon Ball, like in general. But that's probably because of the worldwide, you know, success of One Piece and stuff, especially in Japan. So, yeah, it's kind of weird. Yeah, it's definitely where America's really in a weird edge case where I feel like we're almost at the cusp of... It's basically going to come down to how good is that Netflix series. Because if that Netflix series is actually legitimately good enough to get people into One Piece, we might actually finally get people into One Piece. I think that's the only way we're going to get people into it is through a live action. Because the anime is too long, and we don't have the intention span like we did in Dragon Ball. That's just not the way we consume anime anymore. Like, back yeah. in the day when we would watch Dragon Ball, there was because there was really nothing else on, and Dragon Ball was fucking awesome, and Toonami would play it. Like, that's the reason why so many of us end up liking it so much, and we were able to see it basically one episode a week, and that's how we would consume it. And you can't really do that anymore uh, with kids. There's too many things to actually distract. So you have to come up with a yeah. different way of kind of promoting your stuff. It's a very interesting kind of... Uh, edge case in this uh, scenario here but speaking of anime i wanted to ask you uh if you've been caught up with the manga i am caught up with the manga so i'm currently in the (laughs) i'm currently in the current arc i don't know what they're calling the current arc but i'm i don't think there's a name for it they're just no that's how new it is post post wano i'll say yeah yeah. wano is done for all intents and purposes and the end of Wano is what made me really confused about the timeline of One Piece Film Red, because I actually saw, it's like, it's after Cake Island. It's like, is it? <laughs> I- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really make sense with the sun god in the movie. No, no. And that's another thing. A lot of people who I went to go see it with, uh, no, I went to go see it alone, but the people that were in the theater had no idea what that was, because they were anime onlys. Oh yeah, that kind of that type of stuff always has happened in movies. It always sucks. Mm-hmm. Um, I was gonna say no, it actually does take place post Wano because I remember there being a line about them mentioning him being a warlord. Yeah, Not that's a warlord what, and emperor. Yeah, so 
<laughs> so we'll, before we actually get into what this movie is about, we'll try and make sense of the timeline of it because Big Mom is actually shown in here. And at the end of Wano, <laughs> Big Mom is in the water. <laughs> She's not really, <laughs> for all intents yeah, and purposes, she, we don't know she, what's She somehow made it back. And the most recent chapter had, uh, okay, well, can we talk about some of the recent I'm, chapters? I'm gonna, we're going to go, we're going to have to go. If you're watching this, you know what we're going to be up to date. So, uh, okay, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. It. So, like, it, Pudding is, is taken captive. And mm-hmm. she's like specifically saying, "Hey, if Mama's alive, then X Y Z is gonna happen." So somehow she either missed her, or this movie actually takes place after what we're already seeing. Yeah, it that's the entire thing is that it makes the timeline of things just make very little sense as to what's yeah. going on. Um, Dan and I also think like they don't show any of the characters from Wano, so it may, it's a weird case where I actually think the movie goes out of its way not to spoil some of the current stuff that's happening in Wano, while simultaneously completely spoiling one of the biggest things that happened in (laughs) Wano, which is Luffy going (laughs) into his new form. The good news is they don't really show it. Like, they kind of just, like, it gives, like, a split second, and then he's out of it the next time you see him. He goes basically false sun god. (laughs) Yeah. It's very similar to (laughs) false Super Saiyan that uh, Goku does on Lord's Lug. Yeah, pretty much. But you mm. you don't even really see it. I wanted a close up on it because I wanted to see it in the animation. You just I don't <sighs> think you really get to see it. You just see that split of him and Shanks. Yeah, which is amazing, and I wanted yeah, it yeah. to last so much longer, especially because in the scene, it, they're they're playing it. It's really cool. The way that they do it is that they're playing the instrumental of the main song that is sung at the beginning, which is I believe. Let me look at the music because I this entire soundtrack got its own like. Uh, <laughs> Uh, its own like billboard release in Japan and stuff. New Genesis is playing and the instrumental of that. And then as the song is playing, it goes into uh, We Are, which is the, the One Piece <laughs> opening that everyone knows. Mm-hmm. So it was really a good, amazing moment as like it all culminates into one as he turns into his new form for just like a brief moment <laughs> for yeah, the briefest of yeah. moments. I really, like I said, I really wanted to see it again or, or longer, but I just, they didn't do it. Yeah. That you gotta wait for the anime now, but unfortunately, the anime is not gonna be in like a movie theater setting. <laughs> You're not gonna yeah, get that uh, for sure. Yeah. All right, so let's go into what this movie's about. This is gonna be a very easy uh, explanation of it. For all intents and purposes, this movie is a musical. It follows Uta, and Uta's the daughter of Shanks. That's what she calls herself. And basically, there's a concert going on. It's an idol song. And in the beginning, that's where she sings a song, New Genesis, which then leads into the other song, I'm Invincible, when it looks like a bunch of pirates are going to kidnap her and put her up for ransom because they make it clear to let everyone know, like, this is her first ever concert. She has, at this point, only been doing it with Transponder. Trans- what, what the hell are they called? Trans. Transponder snails, yeah. Okay, transponder snails. Okay, I, it was so weird for me to say it. I was like, is that right? <laughs> no, it's right. <laughs> transponder snails. Um, so this is her first time anyone's seen her live and actually seen it. And the second she comes out, um, the Straw Hats are there too because they're here chilling at the concert because why not? Uh, Luffy comes at the end, realizes it's Uta, and he's about to go fight. The Straw Hats are about to fight a bunch of other pirates that are looking to steal her. The Big Mom pirates are there. Everyone's looking to basically kidnap her for... V- intense and for for various reasons and uta decides to say like hey don't worry about it and she sings a song which is i'm invincible and she basically takes care of every single person there um she strings up the uh the big mom pirates so they're basically non they're non they're a non-threat from this point on um until a little bit later when they come back but yeah we learn a little bit more about her backstory because this is a concert, but it's like the weirdest setup of a concert ever where it's like she sings a song and then she kind of gives the people like food and other stuff to kind of deal with. She has like some kind of power that is later expanded upon of what she can do, but she's basically trying to make everyone in the world feel happy at this specific concert. We learn a little bit more about her backstory, which is that she is Shanks' daughter. She and Luffy used to know each other. If people have... I, this got pointed out to me because I had no idea. You actually do see her in the manga, in the early pages. You do see her as a baby. So she's been in the <laughs> manga the entire time. <laughs> Just never really talked about. Really? I didn't even know that. I was going to this thinking that was a retcon. 
No, apparently if the, they've shown her in the manga for the briefest bit as a baby, and the people have been wondering what is that, and that's actually her. So there you go. Um, they play a game that they used to play as kids, which is basically a chicken game. Luffy loses. Uta makes it pretty clear that uh, every time that they've ever went against each other, she's always won. And Luffy always tries to come up with an excuse saying like, oh, no, I was clearly cheated, whatever. Um, and I think at this point, Luffy says like, all right, this has been a real fun concert. I'm going to leave now. And that's when you start to realize something has gone wrong because Uta does not want him to leave. And she basically wants him to give up pirating. Um, we also learn for the flashback that she used to be the singer of the red-haired... That's the name of Shanks' pirate group, right? The red-haired pirates? Yep. Yeah, she used to be their singer, which I thought was actually nice because it does kind of make it seem like the reason Luffy was so keen on trying to get a singer was because of Uta. Like, that's one of the very first things that he ever wanted for his crew. So I thought yeah. that was actually kind of like a, a good, ex like, without saying why he wanted one so badly, this is kind of like, oh, okay. Because he knew that they were important, and there was a friend, and later on they lose their singer, and they all feel bad about it. So maybe he sees it as an extremely important thing that a pirate crew kind of has to have. Um. So yeah. They resist her, Uta attacks them and traps them. She plays another song, which I think is... Uh backlight this is the one where she's fighting them all and she's singing there's a lot of musical stuff going on here <laughs> through a yeah, lot of this yeah. this uh, movie in, in this first sequence of the movie there is a lot of singing and yeah it, it's a full-on concert it's crazy watching it at a certain point you makes it almost feel like is this gonna just be the entire movie <laughs> is an idol concert <laughs> through it all <laughs> but no eventually they get a little bit but yeah the other straw hats get uh captured uh but luffy gets saved by law who is and bartholomew uh law is there because he was there with his uh <laughs> beppo because beppo is a big fan of uta and they have a, a little joke here of him having like the full-on like idol fan gear the otaku f idol fan gear he has like a shirt with her name on it <laughs> every time someone says her name i think like giant lights come out his back oh my he, god he immediately apologizes for everything which always makes me laugh because i think people have made it said before that <laughs> law's entire crew is him because the rest of him is like the rest of his crew is really not in any <laughs> shape or form as cool as law himself yeah, yeah. I I thought it was cool seeing them recently in chapters, though. I will say. Yeah, I've uh, yeah, because in the recent chapter, they've been making it seem like Law is gonna be fighting uh Blackbeard, and that yeah. was the funny meme I saw of like they showed all Blackbeard's crew and who are they gonna be fighting, and for each slot, it was just Law, 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 Law. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it seems like they'll likely get a little bit more for that. Um. So yeah, they escape her, and we see from the world government, we see the five elders who are the old dudes who always seem to have some kind of backing thing to be going on in the world government. And they basically say Uta's power is too great, and she possesses a threat to the world. So they get, um, they get the world government to basically be like, uh, they... I forget who, what is the name? Akainu? They tell Akainu, handle it. And then Akainu brings in the S Suzuki and Kizaru? No, is it... Who are the two? It's the blind samurai guy and the one who's super fast. Is that uh, Kizaru and Fujitori? Yep. Okay. They bring them in and they're basically going to go subdue her. Um, he Luffy's being chased by Uta a whole bunch. This is where we meet Gordon, who is the person who says was the adopted father of Uta. He was the former king of Elegia, which is where they currently are. Uh, they reveal that he took control of uh, Uta after Shanks' people, uh, his entire crew destroyed everyone in Elegia. That's what he's currently saying. And that is the reason why um, Uta is currently anti-pirate when she was so pro-pirate in the beginning. Because um, basically the entire uh, the destroying of the land has been blamed on shanks and everything and luffy says shanks would never do that that sounds like bullshit to me so we'll see later on in the movie that it is in fact bullshit <laughs> we'll, we'll get there but he raised uta to be a great uh, musician and he also super sheltered her until eventually one day she found the transponder snail and she was able to kind of go around everyone um and she basically hears from everything about like how bad pirates have been to everyone and so basically what she's going to do is that she's going to play something called 
she found the inscription of a song called Tote Musica, and she's going to unleash its power and basically be done with the world. Um, Luffy eventually meets up with Kobe and Helm- Helmeppo, and Blue Uno, who are all working undercover here, and they're part of the world government. They tell him basically what Uta's power is, which is the Sing Sing Fruit, which allows the person to be into a dream world in the Sing Sing world and sings them into it. Basically, you get put pulled into a completely different world if you're in there. Uh, so everyone, they show everyone who was at the concert, they're all like passed out and sleeping. And the only way to really break it is that Uta herself has to fall asleep, but she starts eating a drug called Wake Shrooms. So she's been staying awake this entire time. And basically, as she keeps eating these, she is going to eventually die because <laughs> these shrooms don't prevent, they prevent you from sleeping. So they're going yeah. to kill you eventually. Um, and they also show these a little bit early on. Like Sanji, when he's looking for the food, he sees a, a wake shroom and he quickly tosses it away, which is your way of knowing these shrooms aren't good. Because Sanji would never throw away food unless it was actively <laughs> poisonous of some kind. So you know it's bad. Um, the world government tries to stop her in there, the marine fleet, like, all try and, like, tell her, hey, cut your shit, but then she put, she able, is able to control the people themselves while they're sleeping and they fight back. Um, and this is where we learn from the five elders that the Uta, because of her power, has basically made 70% of the world's population, um, under her spell. And her plan is currently is to... Her plan currently is to trap as many people as she can in her amazing world and then kill herself. And that will save everyone from living a terrible life. That is the idea she currently has. She lives a very sheltered life, so it's not the world's (laughs) greatest plan in the world. But you can understand it as someone who is maybe a little bit overwhelmed with everything that she's got going on. But that's her current plan. And they are basically trying to stop it. Um... Yes, and at this point, this is where all the stuff just kind of starts going together. Brooks figures out how to get out of the trap that they're in, because he realizes it's a musical note. Um, So he just needs to simply play the musical note, and it'll be good, since he's an actual legitimate singer. Which I thought was kind of a bummer that you didn't get to hear him sing at all, because Brooks is like known as the Soul King. And he even mentions, like, it's a little bit weird for me to say it, because I am the Soul King, but she is legitimately the best artist (laughs) in the world. Um, So he's able to free everyone. The big mom pirates promise that they would help, but then they choose not to help the second they're free. But then they learn they really don't have a choice here. And this is also around the time we see Katakuri, like, leave, because he's like, this girl has my sister, I'm leaving, goodbye. (laughs) Uh, everyone's trying to meet up there. Um, we learned that Tote Musica is a thing that summons a demonic being. And the only way to actually leave the world is that you have to beat Tote Musica at the same time as he's being beaten in the real world. Um, which sounds kind of impossible to do. And yeah, it should, yeah. <laughs> it, while I was watching, I was like, no wonder Shanks has to get involved, because this shit sounds impossible. <laughs> I don't see how anyone's doing this in real life. As everything's kind of breaking down in the real world and in the dream world, um, we also learn that the shrooms that Uta is eating is causing her to slowly go insane because it's also like affecting her like emotional drive. It's making her get angrier, easier, all that other stuff. She also it also it is also revealed to the people who were at the concert that basically her plan is to kill herself and do all this other stuff, and they're currently trapped in the Sing Sing world. And that's when you have, like, this entire chorus of people going, like, hey, think about her. And then the, my favorite is the dude who's like, I didn't ask her to do this. I want to go home. <laughs> I, I came here for a concert. <laughs> this is not what I wanted at all. And that causes her to have another breakdown. And she turns everyone who's in the Sing Sing world into, like, inanimate objects of some kind. I forgot that this happened, but the Sunny also got tr- gets turned into, like, a little mascot character. And that's how to let you know that they're in some kind of dream world. Because Luffy was looking for Sunny, and when he finds Sunny, it's like this little thing that goes, Sunny, Sunny. <laughs> it's like a Pokemon of some kind. Yeah, it was pretty cool seeing it, though. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was nice seeing him. So they figure out how to do it. Um, as they're confronting her in the dream world, um, Shanks' pirates show up to Uta's concert in real world, and Shanks basically says, like, it seems pretty clear my daughter needed me. 
And I think at this point, she starts giving it to him, saying, like, all the bad things. She just... <sighs> this is the part where I'm a little bit hectic. A lot of things happen in this short period of time. But basically, Shanks is here to help Uta because his daughter's in danger. It's too late. She's already summoned Top Musica, so they all start fighting with each other. They all start trying to beat him. Um, they start using Observation Hakai to fight him. And this is where we get the cool moment where um, Yasop is the one using it on Shanks' side. And he basically tells him there's someone on their side that knows how to do it too, but he just doesn't realize it yet. Um... And that's when we learn that Usopp also has Observation Hakai, which I don't think that's ever been brought up until this moment, right? Yeah, they never mention anything like that. No, they, they don't bring it up. But here they basically say Usopp has always had this ability. He just doesn't have a handle on it, which really makes me feel like eventually we're going to get him to do it in the current arc that we're getting. Otherwise, this is a pretty big thing to give to someone. But basically, uh, Yasop and Usopp, are able to coordinate the two teams together so that they all can fight Tot Musica at the same time. It was also really cool seeing those two fight together for the first time. Yeah, it was really cool. (laughs) It was was a really good moment. Um, Because it is really funny to think about, like, I remember telling my brother, is like, oh yeah, Usab's dad is one of the members of um, Shanks' crew. And he's like, really? Is that ever really brought up? And I'm like, not really. (laughs) They... (laughs) It's something that he knows his dad is a part of, but it's one of those things where it's like, oh yeah, my dad was a pirate and he just kind of left. And it's not like Usopp has any ill wills. He's like, no, I get it. <laughs> it's cool. I would have left too. That's what I did. Um, so it is a really cool moment seeing them both team up and fight each other. And this is where we get the final moment where, um, not the final moment, but we get the moment where Top Musica is destroyed, where both Shanks and Luffy team up. And this is where we get the swelling moment of... Shanks just absolutely fucking destroying whatever's going on, and Luffy's fighting back, and he turns into... he's At first, he was Bounce Man, and then he turned into Snake Man, and then during Snake Man, he turns into um, the current form that he has. The... What is it called? It... What, Sun God? Yeah, Sun God. I was yeah. trying to remember if it's called, like, if it's a gear, or if it's literally just Sun God. I mean... It's what, Gear 5? It would be Gear 5. Um, yeah, it's the Sun God Nika, but it's Gear 5. So. Yeah, Gear 5. Yeah, that's, it goes Gear 5. They're able to kill Top Musica. Um, I forget during this part or during the other ones, this is where we reveal that it wasn't Shanks' crew who destroyed all of uh, the musical place. It was actually Uta. And the reason is, is that while Uta was there visiting they were going to make the decision of whether or not to leave her behind. And I think she chose to go with them. And because of that, they decided to have a one big party where they put up all the big music, but that awakened something. And that was Top Musica. And she basically brought him to life. And the only reason they were able to stop him is that she was too young. So she fell asleep and she was able to stop the powers there. But in order to keep it like so that a little girl doesn't know everything... Uh, what Shanks does is that he says his crew will take the blame for everything, and that's just the way it's going to be. We later learned that she actually knew all along that she did it, and she learned it from the snail that she used to see everyone, is that there was a recording of what she had done. So she always knew. Um, the reason that the dude who had the Top Musica sheet never burned it is that he was too much of a music lover to actually destroy it. It would have been some kind of like sacrilegious thing. They also make it seem like there's something ancient going on with it because there's like untranslated like stuff in the beginning of the Top Musica song, which I assume is like the ancient language that they've been trying to understand throughout everything. That's what Maybe. I took it as. Yeah, it it seemed like it was something like that, but not 100% sure on that. But anyway, it seems like there's nothing that they can do here. They're both trapped in it, and that's when Uta wakes up and decides that she's going to bring everyone back at this point it seems very clear that uh she is dying so the song is going to be the last song that she sings she sings the song she's able to bring back everyone as she's kind of like laying down there this is when the world government decides to attack and be like no we're taking that girl she clearly did a lot of crimes here we're going to be taking her And Shanks basically says, like, I don't know who the fuck you think you are, but this is my daughter, and you gotta be out of your goddamn mind if you think you're taking my daughter. And he's able to use the Hakai that he does 
where he basically knocks out everyone in the world in, in the vicinity. Yeah, that's but, Conqueror's hockey. Yeah, he does it so hard. Only two of them re- are really left standing, and the both of them are like, you know what? I'm good. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're just gonna yeah, leave. Yeah. <laughs> Which is really funny when you consider one of the dudes shoots meteors as his fruit, and he's just like, "No, thank you. I don't want to deal with this right now." Yeah, it's so cool when they when they start doing stuff like that. Yeah, it was really awesome. So they retreat, and Shanks and Uta get to reconcile as father and daughter as they have a moment. Luffy wakes up on the sunny, and he basically they're all departing Elgia. And he says, like, hey, where's Shanks and everyone? And they point him, and you see that the Shanks and his crew are standing over what is presumed to be Uta's casket, because she has died. So instead of going over there, Luffy decides to just continue going on his way. So you don't get the actual reunion reunion of Shanks and Luffy here, which is what I'm assuming they're going to be saving for um, the actual manga and anime for when it happens, but they make it clear now that he looked at Shanks and he decided it was for the best not to go on there and instead let the the Shanks crew just kind of chill out for now. And that's how the movie ends. And the movie also ends with like a montage where they have Uta's final song, which everyone can hear and everyone kind of... They show like all the characters from One Piece enjoying it. You see the mermaids... Uh, both of the the old mermaid which is the first mermaid they saw which i forget her name but the one from water seven um they show her they show the other mermaids from down below like basically any character that you can think of through the out the history of one piece they show here they show nami's village they show the the zoro's um uh, sword buddies i don't remember their names at this point because it's been so long <laughs> They show everyone, and it's a really nice moment, and it kind of ends on there. And they also show uh, that Katakuri was able to save his sister, and everyone was happy. So that is Film Red in the very basics of it. Uh, There's a lot of other stuff going on here, but it's really best that you just watch the movie to get the full of it. But that's the basic story of it. How did you end up liking it, D-Free? I I like how what they've done for the last couple of movies with... Did you ever see Stampede? I did see Stamp. I didn't see it in theaters, but I did see Stampede. Cool. Yeah, I went to see it in theaters, but yeah, I I enjoy what they've done, uh, and and they did it a lot in some of the older movies too. But I really enjoy just seeing these cameos from characters like you talked about a second ago. Uh, you know, the, the the Zoro's friends and stuff like that. Seeing seeing all these characters, you know, getting their little spotlight for a second. I, I thought it was so cool seeing, like I mentioned earlier, Katakuri coming for a brule. Uh, <laughs> you know, because cool. she's, the, she's the main one that has, you know, had faith in him and stuff like that. So I thought that was really yeah. cool. Um, and uh, he was just like, yeah, I don't care. I'm going. I'm going to go get my little sister. <laughs> yes, which I thought was really cool. It made me go like, oh, that's right. Katakuri's awesome. Yeah, yeah, like you don't see him after. Like that's what I mentioned earlier. They give them a lot of spotlight when they're relevant, but then they become irrelevant until you see them again way later. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, I really enjoyed him. He's definitely one of my favorite characters in the series. But not just that. Like I said, I really enjoy finding more about uh, Uta and and her relationship to to Luffy and the crew and learning more about Luffy's childhood and, and his relationship with Shanks as well. And... Uh, just those types of things throughout this movie were mm. were awesome. Like I, I could, I mean, I don't. It's not that I don't like <clears throat> the concept of the movie, the dream world, and all that. So that's all cool. That's all fine. But I think what really made the movie for me was those types of things. And like I mentioned earlier, Usopp and Yasop fighting side by side in a, in a sense, mm. um, coordinating together and seeing the parallels of Luffy's crew versus Shanks's crew. And I, I really enjoyed seeing that type of stuff. Also, Uta was a cool character too. Uh, yeah. I, I really like how she came full circle, which I mean, you kind of expect her to. That's a pretty normal shonen thing. But I really yeah. like how she came full circle and and was on their side towards the end. And the the concept of uh, what was what was it called? Uh, the the demon from Top Musica. Uh, yes, the I think it's just called the the Music King or something. The Demon Music the demon King? King, something like that. The concept of that guy was pretty cool too, and the fact that he was the one and she was the one that caused the initial. 
uh, issues with Elgia and all that stuff all those years ago, and it was just Shanks is so like, oh no, no, don't let her know that she did this. I want her to think that we did this, you know, mm-hmm. and tell everybody we did this. And I, I really enjoyed that and just the concept of it all. Yeah. It was a fun movie, man, and and yeah. it was different as well because, like I said earlier, as well, all the the singing and stuff. Just this movie felt different. It was yes. definitely different. Like I would one hundred percent recommend people go see this movie. Mm-hmm. I would even say that for people who haven't seen One Piece can still enjoy it. Because I've told people who didn't really see One Piece, hey, would I still enjoy this? And I think the answer is yes. Because it really is a lot of things are centered around Uda and learning more about her. And she's and a new character. So. She, yeah. So she's brand new. So they catch you up with absolutely everything that you need to know. All the stuff about Shanks' crew, they will teach you about it. They'll even tell you things that we didn't know about. Like, they imply that... Because <laughs> the biggest thing is here is like, when did Shanks actually find the time to have a daughter? Because <laughs> that's maybe yeah, the one thing where people yeah. are like, so did he do... Who's the mom then? And the answer is, is that he actually found her in a treasure chest that someone else had basically kidnapped her. And then that from that point, he treated her as a daughter. And through that, we actually learn that the way he got onto Roger's crew was similar. Cause he's like, when he's looking at her, he's like, maybe this is just fate the way it was. Cause they show like a brief flashback of, I think it's Rowling and Roger. And they're looking down in the same way that Shanks is with his crew at the baby Uda. So that's implied that he was basically the same way that they found him. And then they just adopted him into the crew. And I, so, I could have swore that they mentioned that him and Buggy were like that. Him and Buggy were like mm, interesting. I have after, to look I at mean, it for so like, oh, so many chapters. So don't quote me on it. Yeah, but I'm I sure think, they'll. I think it's him, him and Buggy were together. That would make a whole bunch of sense. They they are the same age, so it would make sense that they kind of joined they, in the same. Well, yeah, they they were you know they were they were friends. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Friend. <Yeah. laughs> One of them is a friend of the other one. <laughs> Can I just say with Buggy, it was like, it was one of the recent chapters. I thought it was hilarious where they were mm-hmm. catching Luffy up on the news. And he was like, okay, now that's got to be a mistake. And, they, <laughs> when they like, and he was like, oh, when Rob was reading the stuff, he was like, oh, and, and, and Buggy formed an alliance and he's now an emperor. And Luffy was like, okay, now that's got to be a mistake. <laughs> 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 that's great because yeah i love everything around buggy as well it's a shame buggy wasn't here but he was a big thing in stampede so maybe they yeah let, yeah they let it go off for that for now yeah the characters that were big in stampede weren't really here like yeah, you know there boa. was a there was a yeah i was gonna say boa i think they show her for a second smoker and tashigi same deal they're not in this but they were big in stampede yeah, all the they, they which is smart because they do have a rotating cast that they could easily use for like another purposes and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, which is cool. Uh, but yeah, it's very easy for you to just kind of watch, it, especially because at the beginning it's just a musical time and you're just enjoying the music and you're kind of going through it. And there is a this closes the loop because when Uta dies, that's basically the end, which is kind of a shame because I could I wouldn't mind it if because we see that Uta is actually canon this movie might not be canon but she definitely is mm-hmm. so it would be nice if they were able to actually bring her in here because i actually really liked her character in here and they make you like her a whole bunch that's that final moment where shanks is basically telling her to drink the cure for the for the shrooms that she's been eating so that she'll be fine and she can go to bed and she basically says like no i can't do that i have to write what i've done wrong and she refuses to take it and instead decides to take everyone. That's the thing that the, they always make clear is that her actions are coming from a good place. It's just that she's doing it for the wrong reasons. Like She doesn't want to see anyone hurt. When someone does get shot in the dream world, she takes it as like a big, like, why would you do that? Like, what the hell are you doing? They could die here when we're so close to potentially, like, there's there's peace here. And yet you're bringing so much violence here and it doesn't make sense. Well, it's which because is, she was secluded and all she saw was how horrible the world is and all that stuff too so she just doesn't understand her brain can't comprehend what's going on in the world and why people are the way that they are not that they're that they're right for killing other people and ravaging these places and stuff but it's just how it is yeah but but the idea that there is a life that you continue to live even through all the bad stuff that's the thing that she doesn't understand is that, you know, there's a kid there who's like a sh- sheep herder and he wants to return to his sheep. But she says to him, like, why? You can just enjoy the concert. And he's like, there's no real answer to this. I just need to return back to my sheep, ma'am. 
Yeah. And she doesn't understand that part of human condition, which is the human condition is, is that we live through some terrible shit, but there is stuff that we actually care about in there that we continue to do, even if it is horrible and it is a lot of tedious work. We still continue to do it. She just lived too much of a sheltered life and she couldn't understand that until I think at the end of the movie specifically. And yeah, so you really end up liking her. She ends up being a very likable character. So it is kind of a bummer to see her go at the end, but there's no, they make it pretty clear. There's no way for her to actually exist in the, she's too powerful to even exist. They even say like, she might be from a specific bloodline. They say it in the beginning. Like we think she might have like something related to her, but we can't confirm it, which is probably why the people were kidnapping her in the beginning. Um, yeah, maybe. Yeah, so she is extremely powerful, so it's hard to imagine how she would function in the real world, but I I have the One Piece world, but also I don't care. (laughs) Just bring her in. (laughs) Yeah, she was fun, and I would have loved to have... Like, part of me was hoping and thinking she might have made it out the movie, just so she could maybe make it into the actual show, but no, they didn't do it. No. Well, who knows? Maybe they'll figure it out eventually. Yeah, probably not. Probably, Probably not. not. Let me cope. <laughs> Let me believe. <laughs> but you know what they could do? Just mm-hmm. uh, this is not just to um, canonize her in a way. And I don't really think they care a lot about canon or this and that. But no, no. just to mention her and throw a bone to the movie and the events of the movie, they could have like a brief panel where Luffy thinks about her and just show her a couple of times and you move on. They don't really need to even explain it. Just kind of show it a couple times and you move on. Just to let you know that she actually does exist. Maybe not exactly that telling of the story for her, but she exists in some capacity. Or or existed in some capacity. Mm, Yes, I think that would be excellent as well. I think that'd be a good way of doing it. But yeah, this this movie also looks great, by the way. Seeing it in the theater is a completely different experience. As someone who just, you know, when I wasn't too big into One Piece when Stampede came out for when the movie was in theaters, I wasn't able to see it. Uh, I'm glad I made my way out to see it in this one. Both it and Dragon Ball Super were... I finally understood it after seeing it, where it's like, yeah, it is kind of awesome seeing this <laughs> in in a giant theater with everything blasting. It's a different experience than coming home and then watching it on, like, Crunchyroll. And it's like not not the same <laughs> even if i put yeah. it on a nice tv it's just not the same yeah it is for sure uh-huh. so yeah i think we both ended up really liking this it's a fantastic movie now here's the question that is always going to be asked because we're both dragon ball fans which one did you actually end up liking more between this and superhero this mm. I think like i said the- earlier i i think yeah. it's just that this movie seems like they cared more about it I think I I'm 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 kind of with you on this one. I think it's I think and the funny thing is is it's not specifically the main story beat. It's all the character work that they do. I think that's the thing that I think um, they should do definitely focus in more on Dragon Ball. Like One Piece, with it's like five thousand characters has figured out a way to do it, and we just badly want someone on the Dragon Ball side to realize we want the same thing. <laughs> They even have less characters to worry about. Just show them in some capacity and you're good. I think the superhero was a good first step into that. I just need them to go a little bit beyond that now. Well, and- my thing is I uh, I love superhero and Gohan is my favorite character. And superhero, well, Gohan is one of my favorite characters. But superhero does the same thing uh, to a degree mm-hmm. where it's trying to show you different characters. You maybe don't see a lot like Shanks. You know, I mean, nobody is equivalent to Shanks, but... You know, the same type of idea where it's showing you these characters you don't see a lot, stuff like that. And I enjoyed seeing 18 and Goten and Trunks and characters that were not in the previous movie, something we also talked about with One Piece. But One Piece's cast is so much bigger and more grandiose, so it's a little little different. But uh, the thing with Superhero was that I enjoyed it. I legitimately enjoyed it. I, I thought that outside of a couple of like brief moments, I thought it looked good. Uh, I mm-hmm. don't really have a criticism of it. I just think that they cared more about the production of this movie. Yeah. Um, I, I, from from top to bottom. Uh, I think that their budget was bigger for this movie. They put more into this movie. Yeah. I, I think that this movie was... And they came out. it came out just a couple of months before. I think this movie was where everything went. And it feels like Superhero kind of got the scraps. Yes. It, de- it def- definitely does feel like that. It definitely feels like, as you know, both of us are big in the 
Dragon Ball community. <laughs> Either by choice or not by choice, we both end up being <laughs> knowing, understanding where that come from. And there is some kind of stigma where we feel like, specifically when it comes to Toei, that One Piece always gets the thing. One Piece gets to continue their anime. They take... <laughs> when Dragon Ball Super Broly had some amazing animation, they took those animators and then instead of putting them to work on a Dragon Ball uh, show, they put them to work on One Piece. Yeah, yeah. That's the way it's kind of always been seen as, and it's, yeah, it's hard to, like, not... Sometimes it can definitely feel like people are just complaining to complain, but no, it's... When you see these two movies side by side and you see how they were handled, you can clearly see One Piece has the priority over Dragon Ball, and that's just the way it is. It's a shame. It should be both. They should honestly both get this kind of love and attention, um, because it'd be amazing, but clearly the dudes at work have decided that in order to save money one gets a little bit more attention than the other one yeah definitely unfortunate but like i said mm-hmm. i i enjoyed superhero and I, I thought that it it was well done and i thought that it was an interesting take on trying to make basically piccolo like we talked about the main character and gohan the main character of a different movie goku and vegeta on the sidelines like there was a lot of things about superhero that they were trying to do there so i can appreciate the change and stuff like that i just uh, i when i was watching this movie i was like wow this movie they went all out for this one yeah and there is also something to be said about having certain characters interact in a way that you're like okay this can only happen in this kind of movie because of the canonness of it is just so up in the air like for the, the really nice moment is sanji saving uh brulee where it's like oh yeah all women are equal in my <laughs> eyes. And she gets like a little bit of a blush and goes like, okay, damn. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I was like, hell yes. <laughs> Show who you are. <laughs> he wouldn't care what you look like. All he cares about is that women are okay. Dude, I thought that was so funny. <laughs> it was, it was like, really. Of, of course you would, Sanji. Of course you would. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, it's that kind of stuff where it's like, oh yeah, these dudes interacting in such a way that just comes off amazingly. And it's, it really shows you how much... It's something where, like, if you're not super familiar with it, then it's kind of like, oh, yeah, that's a funny interaction. But when you actually understand the characters and know everything, it's a whole different level of just enjoyment of it. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. And also in terms of how well this movie did... <laughs> holy shit. Do you know how well this movie did in Japan? I don't know, but I saw that it actually... Well, for one, I know that it did way better than Superhero. But I saw that it actually is doing well out here. Yeah, it actually did pretty well here. In Japan, <laughs> here, let me just put it as here, because it's still ongoing in Japan. As of its 14th weekend, the film box, is F- film box office revenue has surpassed 18 billion yen, which is the U.S. is $122.7 million on 13 million admissions, and has been in the number one co- position for 13 weeks. As of when? As of the 14th weekend, when this movie was out for 14 weeks. I think the reason they say that is because uh, it's still out. It was number one for 13 weeks. Wow, this movie did crazy. But that you know did. what? You you mentioned off camera that uh, they also got like a up-and-coming actress. Not actress, but uh, uh, Idol. Idol. Yeah. So that probably really helped boost sales for this movie. For sure. If you have Otto, who does the music for... She she is not Uta herself, but she is the singing voice for Uta. All the songs that Uta sings is by Otto. And she also does a really nice rendition of Bing Sake in the um, official CD version of it. Because as soon as this movie ended, I had to look this up on Spotify. Which you can find the movie's <laughs> soundtrack on Spotify and hear it there. But she does a great I mean, version of that. I just gotta say that, like... That's another thing about like superhero versus this movie. Superhero doesn't have like super no. memorable songs. Like superhero had had some songs that were good and yeah. stuff like that, but there's nothing in superhero anything like this movie. Even the Broly movie had Blizzard, which was like super memorable. It and had, they even had the chanting yeah. of the go- Yes, that that's what I was about to say. They had the chanting. And you know what? It wasn't until you mentioned about that that I realized like no, you're right. There was something like weird with the music because when i got off of like seeing um of 
Oh, just in general, all this talk I've seen about superhero, they never really bring up any of the music stuff. It's good for what it is in the movie itself, but it doesn't reach that level of, like, Blizzard, where it's like, for example, in Dragon Ball Legends, they can have an entire PvP season where Blizzard plays, and it's, like, a big get, because they're like, holy shit, it's the song from yeah. Broly, Blizzard. They, they did the same thing for 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 superheroes movie just recently, and I'm like, dude, I didn't even know this song was from that movie. I had to look up the songs. Like, I, I was really? like, oh. With Blizzard, like... With with Broly and Blizzard, they had the whole music video I think come out of the, the before the movie even came mm-hmm. out and all this stuff. You, so like it was a really big deal. It was, and whether you not you liked the chanting, there was a big debate over the chanting. There were people saying that was some of the raw shit I've ever heard of, and other people going that's just lame. <laughs> But in general, they got people talking. Yeah, and but it's memorable and it's worth note. And I just don't, I don't remember that was superhero. But a, the reason why superhero doesn't have a song like that is because they gave One Piece like six of them, fully, fully sung songs too. Like I don't remember any other sung songs in Broly, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> but this movie got a bunch of them. Yeah, it did. And also speaking of that one, uh, the album which had it, which is Uta's songs, One Piece, Film Red. That's the name of the album. The three Very, singles uh, on the nose there. Mm-hmm. The three singles: "New Genesis," "I'm Invincible," and "Backlight" all charted within the top five of the Billboard Japan Hot 100 and the top 80 of the Billboard Global 200. That's wow. crazy. And yet, Otto is the singer for it. Uh, I actually probably am gonna look up more because uh, I've been playing basically the, all these songs on loop, and at this point, I'm just like looking for. <laughs> Maybe I'll just find more with them in it and see how they go. But yeah, it, it was definitely someone who was young and is a little bit up and coming as far as I could tell. So that would definitely benefit it. Like, there's no one like that in Superhero. The greatest thing, you know, because obviously the cast of Superhero, all of them love love all the Dragon Ball side. The biggest thing that came out of Superhero was that Charles Marnet played one of the characters in the global version. He played, um... Damn, I don't remember the, which one he played, but he played one of them. That's the biggest thing I ever heard coming out of Superhero, was that Charles Barnett, the voice of Mario, was playing a character in a Dragon Ball for the wow. English dub. And that was enough for me to go like, ah, oh, damn, I kind of wish I saw the English dub of that, because that sounds kind of cool. Uh, That's pretty neat. Yeah, it is pretty neat. But yeah, you can tell straight up. That might definitely help with how big of reception is getting in Japan. And to be fair, in other territories, it's doing fan, it's doing perfectly fine. Uh, obviously, over here in the United States, it got it won number one on Friday. I was so hoping that it was gonna beat out Black Black um, Adam. Yeah, Black Adam. But unfortunately, by Saturday, it was like, okay, Black Adam's doing a little bit better. Which I saw it as The Rock called in some favors and said, I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm losing to Black Panther this next week. Okay, war room meeting. We Super, need to. Superhero beat out Idris Elba's movie. Oh, that's right, it did. That was a great... Yeah. Oh, I wanted that to happen again. <laughs> I wanted another <laughs> moment like that. I needed it so much in my life. Uh, but yeah, this came pretty close to being the next one. Uh, this obviously did better than Stampede did uh, yeah. for us over here. Um, it's done some... Yeah, in general, everyone's like, oh yeah, it's done better than Stampede does, has done. It's definitely one of the bigger ones. And I'm glad to see it, because it definitely always feels like One Piece, for how big it is, is just never able to reach that high in America. But it seems like we're maybe starting to see a little bit of a shift as it comes closer to the end in potentially three years from now. <laughs> as enough people have said, I think it's coming close to the end. And as we both read the manga, I think we both kind of know that it's close to the end but there's still some stuff that they need to do so within three years i could definitely see it and it has time for the last poneglyph so you know they're close to the end they're they're pretty close like this it's not like those other years where people are like whatever there's still time it's like "Mm, it's coming close it's it's i feel like there's not a like a lot of they're basically trying to get as close to the end game as they can and then we're going to enter a new era, which is going to be the most frightening era where everyone waits for how One Piece ends. <laughs> I, I don't think I'm ready for it, man. <laughs> I don't think I'm strong enough to deal with the discourse. <laughs> I'm hoping Twitter blows up by <laughs> by the time we have to deal with One Piece ending. But yeah, Film Red, if you have the chance to go see it, go see it. This movie is just amazing. It's everything I think a Shonen Jump movie should be. I think is the fair enough to say. It's definitely the best one I think I've seen so far. Yeah, for sure. This one is really good. And mm. probably I 
I like the Ju- Jujutsu Kaisen. I, the My Hero movies are good, but they're not like anything. They're not crazy. on this. Yeah, they're not on this level yet. They usually have a re- like a really cool moment, like when they did the double Detroit Smash in one of them. Yeah, yeah, and and the one where uh, 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 freaking Bakugo and Deku Deku both are using the power mm-hmm. of uh, All for One, mm-hmm. but like you know, they're not equivalent to this. I don't think. No, 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 they're not. Jujutsu Kaisen might eventually get there when they make their own original one. I definitely feel like it's it's on there. <laughs> and who knows, if if they ever find some weird time to put in a Chainsaw Man movie, maybe. But the timeline of that one, that's something completely different. <laughs> I don't know how you make something <laughs> off of that one. The The timeline of it is crazy. And of course, Mugen, Mugen Train did perfectly fucking fine over here. There's definitely... Yeah. it's. I think it's a really good time to just be enjoying Shonen Jump movies at this point. Because it used to be like, you know, back in our day, people didn't didn't have to deal with what we did, where we would be like, oh yeah, it's the Metal Cooler movie. Oh, this is not as good as the Cooler movie. <laughs> <laughs> this is not as good as the Cooler movie. Or you would get Broly, and then you would get Bio Broly, and it's like, oh, that's not good. Or you get Lord Slug, and you're like, that's also not very good. And then you would also get stuff like Tree of Might, where it's like, this is also... Com- if you want to talk about a movie that's confusing timeline-wise, Tree of Might takes place in the middle of the Saiyan Saga. All those movies are terrible timeline-wise. Yeah, no. Those- One, Piece, One Piece has some like that, too. They're older yeah. movies. Yeah, yeah. Dude, to be fair, they, they do, too. It's a li- it, They're not as egregious as as Dragon Ball is, though. <laughs> like, when Goku yeah. goes Super Saiyan against Cooler, and he treats it like, like oh, man... Yeah, I don't actually. A cooler movie also has a weird timeline because it's after Frieza, but he's missing. So, anyways, that's where we go ahead and wrap up because I'm not going to continue to think about these weird timelines on track. Anymore. Fair enough. I want to thank you very much for joining us. As always, this is the end bit of the show. If you want to support Shonen Archive, you can feel free to leave a like. That always helps. It's always a good time to ask for likes and like the 50, up close to the hour mark. <laughs> That's always a good sign. My my sister is also calling me, so this is a good time to kind of end it. Um, you can find D-Free over on his channel, where he does a whole buttload of stuff. You can go check out D-Free's second channel, uh, where he does a whole bunch of Marvel Snap stuff, which I've been seeing basically daily. You can see me in the comments in there. <laughs> I will gladly talk to him about it any single day. And yeah, thank you very much for watching Shonen Archive, and hopefully next time we'll see you soon. It's been a while since I've done one with Zen, but that's because both me and Zen have been very busy with work. We're trying to get it done, though. So hopefully you enjoy this one for now. Thanks a lot, D-Free. Thank you for joining me for talk about One Piece, and I swear I'll get Zen on it eventually. <laughs> no problem, man. All right, everyone. Goodbye. Say goodbye, D-Free. No. That's how I'm ending it now.